Hello, fellow Rebel Capitalists. Hope you're well. So most of you, I'm sure, have heard the news about Russell Brand. He has been accused of of some, well, you guys know the allegations. And with, with women and some things that are um, just, just horrific uh, crimes, for sure. But the question then becomes, what are the probabilities that he is, is guilty? And looking at this through the lens of common sense. Going back to 2020, you guys know that's something that we have done on this channel consistently. Well, we started this channel in 2021, but going back to 2020 and all the nonsense that was going on with the surveys of sickness, the lockdowns, the mandates, the masks, and then with, with Russia, with what's going on with inflation being transitory, all these things. And it got to a point, and I think most of you agree, that your spidey senses over the past three years have been fine-tuned, to say the least. Your BS meter is very sophisticated. <laughs> your, your, your BS meter could can detect things now that it probably couldn't detect back in 2019. I, I'm, I know mine, as an example, is uh, far more precise. That's for sure. And one of the things that I found where that has led me to be on the right side, what I think is the right side of history, only time will tell, is just looking at things through the lens of common sense. And if it doesn't make sense, then I start to question. And usually if something doesn't make sense, there's a reason why. And then it comes out three months, six months later that, oh, well, that's why, or yeah, it definitely didn't make sense. And it's because it was completely inaccurate. So, and again, go back to 2020. Look at all the things that they were telling us back then. Where if you just stood back and kind of scratch your head and you're like, wait a minute, that just doesn't add up. And then sure enough, it didn't add up because it wasn't true. And we've seen this on, on several different topics since the Cerveza sickness. It wasn't just that. And they're becoming more and more and more prevalent. I think that when you saw this deal with Andrew Tate, if you looked at that objectively, and regardless of your opinion of, of, of Tate, you look at this objectively and you're like, this, there, there's so many holes in this. And it's just bizarre. And another thing that I think is very weird is if you look at the common characteristics that both Andrew and Russell have, very charismatic, ext extraordinarily charismatic, and they're very articulate. And they were, they have a similar message. Now, obviously, there's they're, they differ in a lot of areas, but there's that crossover where they're targeting the global elite, and it's something that we do on this channel. And and look, if anyone should know that there is a line that you can cross there with the global elite, and they have their finger kind of on what's happening with these social media platforms. It, it's, it's, it's me and the rebel capitals channel. Remember back in 2021, we got canceled. We got just completely taken off of YouTube. And it, if, if, if it wasn't for Joe Rogan coming in and, and retweeting, uh, and talking about that on Twitter and thank you, you know, to Joe Rogan, I don't know the guy, but I don't know if he watches the videos or something like that. He was nice enough to talk about it on Twitter. And then once he did, we, almost immediately got reinstated. So even with the small guys like me, uh, you can see the global elite or the powers that be, let's say, targeting more and more and more of that speech that they don't like. And I think that you, know, you, you look at what Tate was saying, you look at what Russell Brand was saying, especially Russell Brand. I mean, he is right over the target, right over the target. He is not only talking and revealing what I think are truths about the global elite, the World Economic Forum, as an example, but big corporations and their ties to politicians in the United States. He talks about the, the warfare state and all these things are going on with Russia, Ukraine. I mean, these are touchy subjects and he is presenting them in a way that appeals to the masses. That goes back to his charisma and his ability to articulate a message. And I think the people, the, the global elite, see him as a serious, serious threat. 
So now getting to the allegations, are they true or not? Obviously, I have no idea. But I think I can shed some light and add some insights that you might not hear other places just due to my personal life experiences, right? The one thing, regardless of whether the allegations are true or not, in this world, people are uh, innocent until proven guilty. So even if you don't like Russell Brand, you have to assume that he is innocent until he is proven guilty in a court of law. And then we can go down a different path and go through different thought experiments and try to come up with a different hypothesis, or maybe we can have a different opinion then. But as of right now, the dude's innocent. So then you have to look at this through that, that common sense, spidey sense type of lens that I think all of us have developed. And it, and it has become very sensitive since 2020. And you have to look, okay, these allegations are from 15 years ago when Brand was extremely, extremely popular. Why? Why? Why all of a sudden now, when he has gained all this popularity, talking about the Klaus Schwab types, talking about Big Pharma, talking about the, the United States warfare state, now all of a sudden, these why didn't they come out in 2017? You know, they got these four gals. Why, why didn't they mention something in 2000? Why didn't they mention something when it was happening? Well, why wait? until he's got this huge YouTube channel and he's talking about these specific topics. See, that in and of itself, for me, makes those common sense hairs on the back of my neck stick up. But let's take it a few steps further, right? Actually, before we do, let me get to a video that I saw recently pop up. And I think this can really give us some insights as to why big pharma, a lot of these politicians, a lot of the global elite, a lot of the Davos types have an ax to grind with Russell Brand and they would like him to go away and go away quickly. And therefore it could, you could argue that this would give them incentive to try to discredit him. Let's look at this clip. This is from the Bill Maher show. I think it was within the last six months or so. We do. We like facts. I love facts. I wouldn't have mentioned it. I'm English, and you know that politeness is our fundamental religion. Um, yeah. <laughs> but they do pertain to this issue. So may I say something? Please, them? please. If they inconvenience you, I I, I'll stop saying them. The pandemic created at least 40 new far, big pharma billionaires. Pharmaceutical corporations like Moderna and Pfizer made $1,000 of profit every second from the COVID-19 <laughs> vaccine. More than wow. two-thirds of Congress received campaign funding from pharmaceutical companies in the 2020 election. Pfizer chairman Albert Baller told Time magazine in July 2020 that his company was developing a COVID vaccine for the good of humanity, not for money. And of course, Pfizer made a hundred billion dollars okay. in profit right. in 2022. Right. And, and may I just mention that finally, and these are this is also a fact, that you, the American public, funded the development of that. The German fund, public funded the BioNTech vaccine. When it came to the profits, they took the profits. When it came to the funding, you paid for the funding. It's difficult not okay, to- Okay, but I, I will just add one thing. It is possible that these are reading capitalists who made a lot of money. Yes. And so he went on to talk about, uh, let's see if actually I'm going to keep playing. Also, there are things. a lot of people who did need the vaccine. Yes. There I'm are a lot fearing. of people who did need the vaccine. I, I did, never wanted to be told I was one of them right. who had to take it. But there are lots of people who needed that vaccine and would be dead without it. That's that is true, too. Bill. That is true, too. More facts. All I'm querying is this. Yes. Is if you have right. an economic system in which pharmaceutical companies benefit hugely from medical emergencies, where a military industrial okay. complex benefits from war, where energy companies benefit from energy crises, you are going to He's generate right. states of perpetual crisis yes. where the interests of ordinary and, and, people. Well, yes. And there you go. So. I, I've never heard anybody, especially on live TV, that's very difficult to do. Take it from someone that does four or five live streams a day. It ain't easy. <laughs> if you guys watch me and think going on here live is a piece of cake, try it sometime. So I have a, a definite appreciation and respect for Russell Brand and what he's doing there. But I, I don't think I've heard anyone articulate 
kind of so concisely on live television, especially to an audience that might not be receptive to that, just truth bomb after truth bomb after truth bomb. And that if you set up a system that incentivizes this, you must expect that you will get perpetual crises. And that's something we talked about on this channel all the time. It's one of the main reasons I set this up. Because we have to understand that the global elite will never let a good crisis go to waste. That we know for sure. And so I think when you look at the clips and you look at what Russell was saying and the popularity of his videos and the way he was saying it, if you're one of those people that are part of the pharmaceutical, the, 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 the corporate elite, the corporate America, or the, the corporatist America, I should say, which is basically economic fascism, the, the socialists like to say that's capital. No, it's not. Not even close. What we stand up for on this channel is free market capitalism. When corporations get in bed with the state, there's nothing free market about that. That is straight economic fascism. So that is something I'm definitely opposed to. Uh, but when you've got this system that's set up for that, and you've got a system that, that profits from, I don't know, Russia, Ukraine, you've got a system that profits or that is incentivized to, well, when you've got a system that is that benefits from crises, and it's incredibly powerful. You've got to expect that you're going to have more of these crisis situations than you otherwise would have. I think that's the simple way to look at it. And then you look at it through the lens of the global elite and what their main objectives are. You guys know they're the Malthusian Marxist cult. And I don't say that to be funny. I'm saying that literally. Their main objectives are straight out of Thomas Malthus. Straight out of the Club of Rome straight out of the limits to growth. And that goes right back to the origins of the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab. And their main two objectives are to reduce energy use, but, they're, but even more so than that is to reduce population. That's what they're all about. So if you have a Thanos complex and you think that you are truly saving the world by trying to, let's say, eradicate half of the human population, and you've got this guy, Russell Brand, in your way, what would you do? Seriously. We, we, we have to come to the acceptance that these people that have tremendous power in the world, not just the politicians, but the Davos types, they're megalomaniacs, guys. Don't kid yourself. They're sociopaths. So you think that a megalomaniac sociopath that was in bed with the World Economic Forum and that was running Pfizer, as an example, or profiting from this, would somehow have some sort of moral hang-up with throwing Russell Brand under the bus? I mean, come on. That... that Again, just using common sense, and I'm, I'm not saying it's true or not, but just using common sense, I think you would come to the conclusion that, of course, they're going to do that. And I was, quite frankly, surprised that they didn't have something like this, or set something like this up even sooner. And then you see all of the uh, uh, groups that were affiliated with brand that are all now just saying, oh, no, we're cutting ties, we're cutting ties, we're cutting ties, we're cutting ties. Okay, fine. But again, where's innocent until proven guilty? It just, that in and of itself seems suspicious. But let me give you some insights here that may not be popular, but it's the truth. It's the absolute truth. And I think it's definitely applicable to this Russell Brand story when you're trying to figure out, okay, what's really going on here? And I want to be very clear. I'm not saying that the, the, the gals that accused him of this are, are wrong. or a, We don't know. We absolutely don't know. But what I am saying is there's a lot of evidence that would suggest this could be 
a setup. But I want to respect and acknowledge the people that are making these accusations. I think you can do both at the same time. So let's go back just with my personal story here. When I was in my early 30s, I was I, I worked my tail off, so I don't want to say I was fortunate enough, uh, but I, I worked my ass off, and I was a self-made millionaire by the age of uh, 32, 33, something like that. And as most of you know, I retired in 2012 at the age of 38. So I experienced a lot of things in my early 30s that uh, most people will never experience. One of the things that I experienced was hanging out with a lot of athletes. So I won't go into where this was. The details don't really matter too much. But I lived in this high-rise condominium building that was very popular with uh, the, the local athletes at the time. So this was in Phoenix, Arizona. So with the, the Phoenix Suns, the, the Phoenix Cardinals, uh, several of the guys lived in this building where I lived. And one of the guys uh, was an incredibly famous basketball player. And he and I became pretty good friends. He lived right above me, and the, the Valley guys would park our cars next to one another and whatnot. So anyway, uh, we started hanging out. Then, uh, like when he didn't have a game, or if I was uh, taking a night off or something like that, you know, we'd go out to a nightclub, and we'd get like a bottle service. I think you'd call it. We'd get a table, and then you know we'd invite a bunch of friends, and then he and I would just split the bill, and uh, you know we'd do stuff like that all the time. So we were hanging out, maybe. I would say um, three or four, eh, well, maybe more than that, F probably four or five times a month, something like that. So I got to see a, a, a side of women that very, very, very few people ever see. Uh, I, I would argue even other women. And, you know, this goes into a lot of what Rolo talks about, my good buddy Rolo Tomasi and, and Rich Cooper. Uh, he's got a channel called Entrepreneurs and Cars. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Rolo and, and Rich's content. But let me just put it to you this way. Every night we would go out, if we had a table, there would literally be a line, and I'm not joking, a line of women. 50 deep that would just be waiting because we'd have to have ropes around the our, our little table so people and we'd have our own security right there so the girls would be in line coming up and asking permission to come in and to talk to uh my friends and i, I may, maybe uh I don't know, maybe they wanted to talk to me as well, but uh, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I'll let you guys fill in the blanks there. But anyway, uh, it, it, fortunately, you know, most of you don't know this, but I'm six foot four. And so, uh, yeah, maybe they were coming to talk to me. Maybe they weren't. Who knows? But that's not relevant to the story. What is relevant to the story is that a lot of them were coming up and they wanted to talk to, to my, my friends, right? They wanted to meet my friends. This happened every single night to the point where when we would come back to our place, because a lot of times we would get a limo or we'd get one of these big you know, vans and whatnot. Half these women would follow us that we wouldn't ask them to. They would literally follow us back to the building. And we would go in through security and you would have literally 50 women just scrambling around pa parking their cars and trying to like jam through the front doors to come in and, and, and come up to the, uh, 
you know, the apartments or where we were living and they'd go through security and the security guys would be like, you know, what do we even do here? It was like a scene out of the Beatles where we'd be in the lobby and you'd have 50 women there that we didn't even know that girls that we didn't even talk to at the nightclub that would literally follow us back and they would be throwing themselves at, at, at my buddies. And this happened every night, not, not just sometimes all the time. And I would go out and I would see gals, you know, that I talked to one night and, and they would see this going on and they, they would say, Oh, that's so disgusting. I can't believe all those girls that throwing themselves, blah, 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 blah. And then the next week I'd see the same girls after a couple of drinks and they'd be doing the exact same thing. Exact same thing. Now I'm not saying that this is representative of all women. So don't get me wrong, right? But this is a side of, of, this is a dynamic between men and women that I think very few people have ever witnessed. When you get to a level of a superstar athlete, like uh, who's the kid I just saw on, on Netflix the other day? Uh, I think his name's Patrick Mahomes. When you get to that level, when you get to a level of one of these NBA like superstar, all-star athlete guys, when you get to a level of uh, a, an incredibly famous Hollywood actor like Russell Brand, th these the, the way women treat them is is like nothing you can imagine. Trust me, you 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 don't get it. For most guys, you know it's all you can do to struggle up the uh, muster up the courage to go ask out that girl that you like at work. Or you're going to the gym. You're doing all these things. Maybe you're 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 trying to practice your I don't know your your one liners or something at the bar. It, it you you got to put forth quite a bit of effort, quite a bit of effort to get a date, even if you're a good looking successful guy. That's just kind of the the burden we we bear as guys. It goes back to, you know, we're always the ones that have to kind of approach the gal that you're interested in, and a lot of times you get shut down, and that's just the way it works, right? We've all experienced that. This, what, 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 what a superstar athlete or a, a famous actor deals with, you, you can't get your mind around it. And when they say that women are throwing themselves, you, you kind of use that figure. It's almost literally to where I, I have seen women fight, literally fight with one another just to be around in this person's presence or just to come up the elevator to go to the, 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 the after party. I mean, stuff that would completely blow your mind. You've never seen anything like this on a movie. You've never seen that anything on like a YouTube video. You've never seen anything like that. At least I've never seen this. Like I, what, like what I witnessed in real life. So here's my point. These allegations stem from when Russell Brand was at the peak of his fame, when he was doing all of these movies. And, you know, I don't know Russell Brand, but let's just think about this. <laughs> okay. You got some guy that's really attractive. I think he's, he's rather tall, unbelievably charismatic. I mean, he is up there like rock star level, right? And if, if the guys that I was hanging out with, you know, the, the superstar athletes, were at that level, I would argue Russell Brand was even above them. I mean, he 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 literally like rock star level to where girls are like freaking out, like screaming around him. And again, this might be uncomfortable for some women to hear, but I'm sorry, this is just the truth. This is what I saw. And I didn't see it once. I saw it literally almost every single time we went out for for two years straight for heaven's sakes, right? So this is not an anomaly. This, this is, I've got a lot of data points to back this up. So let's go back to when Russell Brand, what, when these accusations came out. So what they're saying is that he basically forced himself on women. Now, again, I, I don't know if this is right or wrong. That This may be true. Maybe he did. But I'm just saying he would have forced himself upon these women when he literally would have had a line of a thousand plus 
women just beating down the door to come in and sleep with him. I mean, the, the, the best analogy that I can give you is this would be like Jeff Bezos being accused of robbing a Circle K and stealing the cash out of the cash register. Don't you think that would be a little weird? Like Jeff Bezos, you're worth a hundred billion dollars, a hundred billion. And he, he went into a circle K and stole 50 bucks out of the cash register. Huh? Seems a little weird. And I would say that the Russell brand example is even more extreme. And again, if you've ever had, if you've ever been around a, a superstar, celebrity, actor, uh, uh, athlete, you know exactly what I'm talking about, especially if you've gone to a nightclub or something like that, and you spent a lot of time with these people, you, you, you have a sense for what I'm saying, and you know that it's, it's very, very true. So you, I think you've got to look at this story through that lens, understanding that Russell Brand would have had to force himself upon these certain women when he literally could not walk outside without women freaking out, screaming, and, and, and throwing themselves on him. Like, I have seen women rip off their shirts, throw their, their, their undergarments at, 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 at my friends. I mean, stuff that would completely blow your mind to the point where they had so many women that, that were just literally fighting each other to be with them. It got to a point where th it was like getting old. Like, eh, I just, I just wish I wouldn't have any interactions with women tonight when we go out. You see, and, and I know that's hard for most guys <laughs> to get their head around because it's just the opposite, but this is what the Russell brand types deal with. I've seen it with my own eyes. So, did these, what did he force himself upon these? Maybe, maybe. But that would be like Jeff Bezos robbing a Circle K for $50 in cash. That's my point. So we'll have to see how this plays out. Should be interesting. But I think the moral of the story here is we've got anyone who sticks their neck out and starts telling the truth. I think Elon Musk is next. I mean, if something didn't come out about Elon Musk, uh, you know, like this, some sort of allegations in the next year or two, I would be shocked. And the only thing that would add up for me there is that he's just got too much dirt on too many people. And he's got so much money that, that he can, that the people that he has dirt on, he can make them pay. But... I don't know. Again, that's another conspiracy theory, a hypothesis, a, a hypothesis. We'll have to see how this plays out. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. As always, make sure that you're standing up for freedom, liberty, free market capitalism. If you want more of the most important recent news stories that we have covered on this channel, Josh will put them in a playlist right about here. And I'll see you on the next video where we'll get back to the macroeconomics.